Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about give your ex the gift of missing you. So what this means is, is that if your ex is no longer giving you their attention, so let's say they dumped you, they're no longer messaging you, they're no longer talking to you in any kind of capacity, then the only thing that is left to do for you is to remove your attention from them. Right? So if you have been messaging your ex a lot since the breakup and you've noticed that that hasn't been working, that hasn't been working in your favour, right? because they say they're not back in your life, that's how you know it hasn't worked, right? then it's time to follow the no contact rule essentially okay? and to not be giving your ex that attention anymore because no one can miss you, your ex cannot miss you if you're always in their DMs and uh, you're you're always calling them up okay not even always just even if it's just like a couple of times a week that's still too much if they're not contacting you at all okay so when you when your ex looks at their phone when it comes to you they should be seeing zilch absolutely nothing okay um because if they're no longer giving you their attention then no amount of you giving your attention to them is going to make them miss you and want you back, right? If you want them to miss you, you need to disappear because that's what it means to miss someone, isn't it? If you miss someone, it's because you haven't seen them in a while. It's because you haven't spoken to them in a while. They can't miss you. They can't want you back if you're always there. You, can, you know, you're too familiar, okay? So give them the gift of missing you because they've surely given you enough of the gift of um, missing them. So you might as well return the favour, essentially, right? So it's important then to follow the no contact rule, okay? Um, so for me, the no contact rule is a great tool that you can use. And this is the way that I've always explained it and the way that I've always tried to, to say to people how it needs to be done. So when you use the no contact rule, the no contact rule should be forever. Once you vow to yourself, that you are no longer going to speak to your ex, then you must vow that you must never speak to them again unless they reach out to you first, as in they send a direct message or a phone call to you. That's it. Those are the only two options. They have to call you up themselves or they have to message you with them initiating the conversation. Anything else is just... Great. It doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. So if they like your posts, that's not them breaking no contact. If they retweet your tweets, that's not them breaking no contact. If they add you on Facebook or they follow you again on Instagram, that is not them breaking no contact. It has to be a message, right? That's what contact means in, in, that, in that sense, right? It has to be them contacting you first, okay? So the no contact rule is forever, okay? And the great thing that the no contact rule does is that it shows you with time how someone feels about you. So with your ex, for example, if you're doing the no contact rule on your ex, what you'll see with time is how they feel about you. If they still love you, if they miss you, if they still care about you, eventually they will do something about that. They will reach out to you. If they don't love you, if they don't want to be with you, or if they're stubborn, then you'll just never hear from them again. And I get people saying to me, like, oh, yeah, but my ex is an avoidant, or my ex is really stubborn, um, so they're never going to own up, they're never going to admit that they miss me. But it's like, well, good. You don't want that kind of person in your life anyway. Because if you are in a relationship with someone who is stubborn, who is an avoidant, and avoids conflict, then you're the one that's always going to have to be picking up the pieces, even when they do something wrong, right? Because someone who is very stubborn, most of the time, they don't own up to their mistakes. So if they do something to hurt you, at the end of the day, it's probably you're the one that's going to have to apologise for that, right? And if they dumped you, right, and they're too stubborn to admit to their mistakes, then you don't want that person in your life because they can't communicate. They can't communicate like an adult. And essentially, they are a child, because if you can't admit to your mistakes, if you can't own up and say sorry, if you can't own up and be like, okay, you know what, I made the mistake of dumping you, I actually do 
still have feelings for you and I'm really sorry, maybe I was too harsh in my decision of dumping you and I'd really like to try and rectify things. If they're too stubborn to say that, if that and that's how they feel, then that person has the maturity of a child. And uh, you shouldn't want to be in a relationship with a child. Okay, there's no point. This is really, really stupid thing to do. So you want to make your life easy for you as possible and make your life as pleasant for yourself as possible and find someone who isn't stubborn, who isn't going to act like a little baby. Okay? So follow the no contact rule. It's another way that you can give your ex the gift of missing you. <laughs> it's the best one. <laughs> okay? So if this feels really hard for you and if you're really worried about doing these things because you're absolutely terrified of losing your ex then I would say that there is a confidence issue there so if you would like to then please go and check out this video in the description of this video about confidence it's called the best strategy for self-confidence and that will help boost your confidence so that you will no longer be afraid of losing people in your life that no longer want you because if you're afraid of losing someone who has displayed through their actions that they're not afraid of losing you, then that, then obviously there, the, the is, you're very needy and you are someone who doesn't have much self-respect and not much self-confidence. So that video should help with that. Okay, it's a bit of a journey though. It's not like you watch that video and you're going to be instantly confident. There are things that you need to do. Um, but if you're really... If, if building confidence is really important to you, you will do it, right? If you want to be more successful with uh, the opposite sex, if you want to be more successful in life and you want to feel better about yourself and you want to feel more confident, then you have to do the work in that video, okay? Um, and if that's important to you, then you'll do it. If, be, if, if being a confident person is important to you, you will do it. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is that from now on, never try to be in anyone's life who has displayed through their actions that they don't want you in theirs. It's very, very, very important. And that's one of the first steps that you can take to becoming more self-confident and having more self-respect. And notice that I said anyone, right? So that, that doesn't just go for people that you're dating, people that you've been in relationships with. It goes for everybody, like friends, family members, if they have displayed through their actions that they don't want you in their life, you should not be trying to inject yourself into theirs because you're afraid of losing them. There are plenty of people out there that you can be friends with, that you can have great connections with, that you can have romance with, that do want you. That is a 100% possible for you. And why, th and why the reason why this is important, the reason why it's important not to be in someone's life or try to force yourself into someone's life who doesn't want you is because it does a damaging effect to your self-respect and how you feel about yourself. Because it's almost like, you, that, that, if you think of it in like a physical fight, right? This person has punched you away. And basically what you're doing is you just keep on coming back for more punches and you're not even swinging, right? You just keep on letting them hit you. You just keep on letting them hurt you if you are trying to do that so you've got to walk away from people who are not treating you with the respect that you deserve and have showed through their actions that they don't want you in their life so they've dumped you or they that say that they don't put in any efforts so let's say that you've got a friendship right and a lot of people have these kinds of friendships and you're the one that's always trying to like hey let's hang out let's do something together you're the you're the one that's always initiating those things like they don't invite you to anything and that yet and yet you're inviting them to everything and you're trying to ask to hang out with them yeah you don't want to be doing that kind of thing if you have a friend like that then back off and see what happens don't talk to them again don't reach out to them if you're the one that's always reaching out don't reach out to them see what happens right if that person is actually genuinely your friend eventually they'll reach out and ask how you are they'll ask to hang out with you and and stuff like that but if it's a friend that doesn't actually really care about you, then you'll just never hear from them again. So, yeah, figure it out, right? Don't be in someone's life who doesn't want you, especially as well, those people that are really mean to you or disrespecting to you as well. It's not a good idea, 
right, to be around people that are saying horrible things to you. It's always best to walk away. So when someone is mean to you, whether it's a family member, a friend, a lover, it doesn't matter who it is. If someone says something to you that makes you feel horrible about yourself, then say, I really do not like the way that you just spoke to me. So I'm going to go. And you know what? If you want to say sorry to me and want to apologize and treat me like a civil human being, right, then you've got my communicate, you got my contact information, apologize. And then you go and leave the situation um, you go back home or you go and hang out with some other people or you go and stay with your friends for a while, your other friends, whatever it may be. But the important thing is, is that from now on, you must never try to be in anyone's life who has displayed through their actions that they don't want you in theirs. It's very important. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloverage.com and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.